lo más eh, facilón. As you can understand, the easiest thing for bankers to do is to claim that the contract they are carrying out is not really a deposit contract, but a loan contract. Furthermore, we must understand that in the beginning, doctrines which fell into this group were the most numerous. They were formulated by theorists who, in most cases, initially defended a fractional reserve on deposits owing mainly to the influence, and here lies the reason for the confusion between the two contracts, of the institution of the Depositum Confessatum, which, as you will recall, emerged in the Middle Ages as a subterfuge by which to avoid the canonical prohibition of interest-bearing loans. The Depositum Confessatum involved disguising a loan as a deposit. I'll lend you some money for a certain period of time and at a certain interest rate. But we can't do this because it's a crime and also because we'll go to hell. So let's agree to declare under oath that what we're carrying out is actually a deposit. I'll deposit some money with you and at a particular time I'll ask you to return it to me. You say that you don't have it and then as a fine and not as compensation agreed upon in the contract you will be obliged to pay interest. That was the institution of the confessed deposit, which was not really a deposit, but a loan. For many centuries, the institution of the depositum confessatum was used to conceal, disguise, and give the appearance of legal respectability to loans. It became common knowledge that this practice was widespread, and the legal theorists, theologians and moralists who analyzed the institution all ended up being suspicious of anything that sounded like, was related to, or had been declared to be a deposit. And eventually, to avoid taking positions viewed as illegal, criminal or immoral, they came to conclude that every deposit was a loan. The distinction between the two institutions disappeared. People tended to equate them. La confusión entre depósito y... So it is clear why the confusion between deposits and loans became widespread. And when interest-bearing loans were no longer prohibited, the whole tradition of confusing the two radically different institutions persisted. Furthermore, this confusion has come as a great advantage to banks. Because if a banker can somehow argue that what he has received is not a demand deposit, but a loan, then he can in turn legitimately lend it to a third party.